and just have a gift. And their gift was to be able to put what's going on in the world and what's going on in themselves and write it on a piece of paper and put it to beats. Tupac was uh, a once in a generation type of person. And people I think recognize that um, from, the, from the very start. I can't compare him to Malcolm or to Martin except to say that they all had valuable lives. They treated every day of their lives as though every moment was important. So in death, Tupac has indeed become larger than life precisely because his own living has been terminated, but yet the life of his, um, of his image and his symbolism continues. At the time of his death, Pac was coming into his own as a powerful articulator and advocate of social injustices. People who knew him believe he would be using these skills in some way if he were alive today. Tupac said in the year 2000, I'm going to be sitting across the table from the rest of the other candidates running for president. I believe that that's part of the reason why he was assassinated. You know, I think Pac would have said, you know, we need to, he would have said something that a lot of folks in power would have been frightened about and found even dangerous. He would have been subversive because he came from that background. And if I can sell two or three million records, I can get two or three million votes. If I can get two or three million votes, I'm a contender. Personally, I definitely think he would be, you know, be politically active. Just the fact that we have a young black man in debates would have been big, would have exposed a whole lot. The fact that he got revolutionary consciousness and, and, and grassroots community consciousness would have brought a whole new set of issues to the table that John Kerry and George Bush ain't talking about. This. You know, he would actually be someone that, you know, anybody my age or younger would definitely identify with and almost trust him and follow him in anything that he said to do at this point. And I think he knew that he was moving towards that. I know for a fact he was on his way to being Machiavelli Records. If Tupac would have went independent, that's another reason I think he was assassinated. Tupac would have went independent, that would have changed the whole record industry. That's like Marvin Gaye going independent. That's like the Beatles or Elvis Presley going independent. Now what he was gonna do with it, not exactly sure, but I definitely think he would be doing something, you know, still in music, but very active politically. I mean, it was in his blood. For those who knew him and those who studied him, there was no question that Pac was at an apex at the time of his death. There is also no question that he still had a lot more to do. He was just transitioning to become an even huger cultural presence through the means of his aesthetic appreciation and his artistic imagination, through film work, where I think had he lived, he would have been such a huge presence. So they had so much stuff, and look, they still have stuff that they're putting out now, you know. Within those nine months, I mean, he, Tupac completed a lifetime of, of work, musical work, as well as all of his writings, his poetry, screenplays that he was writing during his time in prison that are now some of which are being developed by his mother and her company, you know, Amaru Entertainment, which is named for him, it's his middle name, you know, Tupac Amaru Shakur, and he of course is named for a tribe of uh, revolutionaries in Peru. So the legacy of Tupac is deeply entrenched in the psyche of the hip-hop generation. Now we go back to where he was at just before he died. Tupac Shakur lived passionately, fully, and inspirationally. Moments were rarely wasted. The night before he was fatally shot, he was in the studio in LA before leaving for Las Vegas. Uh, we got a call, I think, like two, like Wednesday or Thursday, and said we're going to do a song for the Mike Tyson fight. So you know, Tupac wants to do a song. You know, Tyson talked to Tupac, wants him to do a song. All right, cool. And so we sat there for two days working on the music, and then on Friday. Was it Friday? Yes, the fight was Saturday. Yes, yeah, so Friday, uh, Tupac was to show up and you know do the lyrics for it. You know, and to finish it off, we mix a Friday night, 
they go off to Vegas and do the fight. The night of the session, Friday night, I remember it was about, it was early in the afternoon, about three, four o'clock in the afternoon. Pac had been apparently at a, a video shoot all day. Um, we get the call, it should be there at a certain time, have it all set up, have the microphone set up. Everything needs to be up and running when he walks in. He would not walk into a room unless he was supposed to be there for a purpose. He ain't just gonna walk into a room and be standing around. He's there because he's needed for something. He was constantly moving. I mean, you know, he was recording all night. He'd be on the movie set. He'd come back. It wasn't like, oh, I'm taking two days off and getting a hotel room, you know, and relaxing. Hell no. Which maybe had to do with the fact that he, he always kept saying, I'm going to be dead. They're coming to get me. They're coming to get me. So I think he wanted to get as much done as he could. He would sit there and have so much fun on the mic. You can just hear it in his voice. He's jumping up and down. I, would, I was looking in the vocal booth while he's doing it. He's jumping up and down, throwing his hands up, just all excited, having a good time. Comes out of the booth after we finish the song, he comes out of the booth, is that it? We're like, yeah, that's it, we were just told to do one song. He's like, well, how long do we have the, the studio for? Well, we got it for 12 hours. All right, well, we got some time. I'm not leaving for Vegas for about another six hours. Why don't we do some more songs? I mean, you know, it's not like these rock and roll clowns that spend three days getting guitar sounds. You know, seriously, they don't spend three days. They spend about five minutes, if that. I mean, when they were done with a the rap, they pulled the mic down. I was playing a horn part. I better have it because there wasn't sitting there crying. My headphones don't sound right. I can't work under these conditions. You know, there's none of that. It was just intense fast. You know, faster than 80,000 cars lined up at McDonald's wanting their hamburgers, you know what I mean? It was just bam, 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 bam. I remember one time, <laughs> I was telling you earlier where he would like turn, he'd want to turn the air conditioning off and make it hot like prison. <laughs> he'd jump around and shit <laughs> and just totally get into it. Pac liked the flow. You, you didn't necessarily didn't have to have the perfect part, but if it flowed right, you were cool, you know? And they moved on. So in retrospect, you could get two or three songs done a day. I mean, done, ready to go to radio.